but let's try it out. So it's been a few weeks since I actually ordered the parts that I needed for the front cylinder. And it's one of those, thanks to UPS, my parts had gotten to Jackson, Mississippi, and they diverted them to New Mexico just to come back to Jackson, Mississippi, and then come on to Meridian. So it kind of delayed me a little bit on finishing up the Sportster, but I finally got the front cylinder back to the same location like I was talking about of the rear cylinder. And before I can actually spin the motor over to start getting oil up to the rocker assembly, I actually need to show you one more thing. So I about forgot to show you where these little small O-rings that was included in the kit go. And where they go is down here at the bottom where your pushrod tubes are and your lifters, there's actually a plate right here. And inside that plate is two little pins that go through to hold your lifter in place. And so we need to remove this plate so that we can replace the O-rings that are sitting there on that retaining pin. These little Allens right here are 3 16 So you can see right here where there's a little groove and hopefully you can get in there with your little fingernail to pull one of them out at a time. And that's what it looks like. So I'm going to replace this little O-ring right here on the very end. All right, now that I have the O-ring replaced, I'm going to put it back in and do the same thing for the other one. Once you got the O-rings replaced, you can put your plate back on, making sure that your little groove right there is lined up with the pins. So now that we got the little plate right here snug back up, we're going to torque it to 80 to 110 inch pounds. So I'm going to go in between to 95 inch pounds. All right, let's do this other side. So I looked more into what I was actually wanting to do as far as trying to prime the oil system and everything. And it's one of those where the oil pressure is based on the RPMs and by just turning the motor over by the starter, it's not gonna be able to build enough RPMs to cause enough pressure to actually push oil up through the rocker covers. I kind of wish it would, that way I know that I'm getting proper oil in up there to the rocker covers and to all the lifters and everything, but it's one of those that I'm just gonna to have to hope that everything's put back together correctly. As you see right here, all of the lifters are moving and everything. So I'm gonna assume that I've got everything put back in place. So now we can actually start installing our middle rocker cover. So we need to go ahead and put this gasket right here and it's got a groove that it goes into. Then we'll set our middle rocker cover on. Once we have that on, we need to pull our old flap off. And it just pulls right out. Put our new one in. All right, now that we have the flap on, we can actually put our upper gasket in. Once again, it goes into the groove. So before we put our upper rocker cover on, we need to put this little gasket in and it goes right here in the center of your rocker assembly. It's got a little groove it goes into. Now that we got that on, we can actually put our rocker cover on. So our bolts on our rocker cover, don't forget your little fiber washer right here. And then we'll put them in place. Now 
now that we got our rocker cover plate on there and the bolts kind of snug, we can actually torque these to the torque spec that the book says. These are going to be 3 16 Allen, and you're going to want to torque these from 120 to 156 inch pounds. I'm going to go in the center to 138 inch pounds. So now that all of these are torqued, I'm going to do the same thing on the front cylinder. Now that we have our rocker covers all put together, we can start working on our intake. Now the way your intake goes on is you actually have little flanges that fit on each end right here. Now these flanges have a certain way they go on. If you'll look right there, this one right here has a front for your front cylinder, and this one right here has an R for your rear cylinder. So the way they go on, with your carburetor facing this way, the way it's going to go on to the bike, you want your rear cylinder to go on just like this, and you want this little ear right here to actually face away from where the carburetor is. And then once you have it on there, you got your gasket, and if you look right there, you have kind of a groove that your gasket goes in with this beveled edge. And so as you put it on, you kind of stick it on there, and you want it to stay as flush as you can with this actual outside, so whenever you're tightening it up, it'll actually tighten up against your gasket, and you'll have a good seal. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side, for the front. Once again, make sure our flange faces away from where the carburetor is and then make sure our bevel on our gasket faces inward. And now we're ready to put it on the bike. So to make it a lot easier as far as putting this in, put your screws on this side, that way when you're putting your intake in, it fits in that little slot. So like I said, put these in here just kind of little ways, you don't have to go very far in because you still want your intake to go in there. And now that I've got it kind of started, I'm going to slide our intake in. Undoing this one a little bit so it fits in there. All right, now that I got this side started, let's go to this other side. Okay, so on this other side, we're going to try to feed this in. I'm going to try to get it where you're, I'm not in the way. So just kind of feed it in there. And then try to line it up the best you can. And you're only wanting to tighten these by hand right now. So once again, I got it lined up and I'm going to put this in. And I'm just going to snug it down with my fingers for right now. So for right now, you're still wanting your intake enough to where it kind of moves around. And the reason being is that we're fixing to put the carburetor on here and your carburetor cover right here so that we can actually set our intake before we actually tighten everything down, just like this. Put our gasket right here on our intake. And it just slides into the groove on the back side. And then we'll put our carburetor like it's supposed to go And then for now, like I said, we're just going to kind of set this on here. I'm not really worried about tightening these up by, you know, torque spec or anything. I'm just kind of trying to line everything up. So 
I'm just going to kind of start them a little bit. And then with a 530 seconds Allen, just kind of run them in, like I said, just kind of snug, just that way it's not flopping around. All right, so now we can actually line all this up and we can run our bolts in that's going to kind of hold our carburetor into our intake. And then with a 5 16 just kind of snug it up, just kind of evenly. And so now we have our actual intake set. And so now we can go in and tighten up all of our intake bolts to the actual torque spec and kind of tighten them evenly. That way we don't have any leaks or anything. So tightening these up is kind of a challenge because of the angles that you're having to get to. Now I did have a person that commented on the disassembly video that kind of told me some Allen wrenches that are a little shorter right here and have a ball like this on this end. I just hadn't had a chance to order any of those, but here's a picture of what they look like. It's one of those that these bolts are actually quarter inch Allens. And like you see, I've got an Allen wrench. I've also got a long Allen with a ball that's the 3 8 drive. And then I also have one of these little, um, I guess you'd call it bit drivers type this that I'm hopefully going to be able to use also. So let's get these all tightened and kind of tighten them in kind of a evenly pattern. That way we're not pushing it to one side or the other. So by looking at it, it looks like I need to tighten this side up just a little bit right here and then tighten this front side over here to kind of even these up right now. So I'm going to use this right here. All right, and now I got a, looks like an even gap right there. And then I'm gonna tighten this one right here. And now it looks like I've got an even gap right here all the way across. So the book does say it wants you to torque the intake bolts from 72 to 120 inch pounds. Now it's one of those where I've tried several different ways to get an actual torque wrench in there and especially on this side right here that you see, I don't see how you can get a torque wrench in there and actually torque it like the book talks about. So if any of y'all have a video or know of a video out there of actually torquing these with the actual torque wrench, especially on this side, then please let me know so that I will be able to torque these properly in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I kinda, from doing all the mechanic work, I kinda know when I get to a certain point, and so that's what I'm gonna do is tighten it till I feel like I'm at that torque spec and then I'm gonna stop. But I'm gonna make sure that I'm tightening them evenly and I have an even gap on both sides. All right, now that we got our intake tightened down, we can actually go ahead and remove this so that we can put our gasket between our carburetor and our outside cover. So as far as our carburetor is concerned, I did go in and clean everything up. I followed this video right up here, which is Saddle Trance video, and it was a very good how-to video. So if you need to rebuild any kind of CV carburetor, Y'all go watch that video because it is very detailed. So I'm not really going to go over rebuilding a carburetor, but what I did do is I got a new uh, carburetor cable and I also went in and changed out all the hoses. Um, a lot of the hoses were kind of deteriorating and everything, so I did want to do that. Um, on my overflow right here, it was actually routed behind our push rod tubes right here and I just didn't like how close it was to the actual jugs. So I've kind of ran a new hose out here on the outside of the pushrod tubes. 
It may not look that good, but I'd rather it not be next to the jug and next getting all that heat. So that's the reason why I'm going to do that. So the first hose I'm going to put on is the one that goes right here, which is your intake from your gas tank. So I'm going to put it on there. And then I'm going to put the hose clamp. I'm not going to tighten it up till I get ready to hook everything up to the gas tank. That way I can still kind of turn it if I need to. The next hose that I'm going to put on is actually going to be our overflow for our bowl. So it goes on down here at the bottom. So the next hose that we're going to put on is actually going to be our vacuum hose, which is this one right here. Now, the vacuum hose is connected to our VOES system right here and also to the petcock of our gas tank. I'm not going to put any hose clamps on here, and if I see that I'm actually getting any kind of vacuum leak, then I'll put a hose clamp on here. But these are pretty tight, so I don't know whether I'm going to have any kind of hose clamp issues. So the next thing we need to hook up is our two throttle cables. You got your throttle cable and your idle cable, and your idle cable, which is the one that's got the little spring on it, is going to go here in the back. You're going to want to make sure that you put your little spring right there into the inside of the ferrule, and the cable is going to fit inside the little groove. So I'm going to feed the cable into the groove, and then I'm going to drop the spring into the actual ferrule like so. Now that I have everything in there, I'm going to put the little ferrule right here and just spin it around so it's in the actual groove of the carburetor. Now that we have our idle cable in there, we can start working on our throttle cable. Now the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put the ferrule into the hole right here, route it into the groove just like that, and then as I pull it up, I'm going to try to get it into just like you see. Now that we have our two throttle cables in there, we can route our choke and our hoses that go to the gas tank to the other side and kind of feed everything in there, keeping the VOES out of the way. So before we can actually put the cover for our breather on the bike, we need to go ahead and work on the other side to get the upper motor mount and all the other stuff done on the other side. So let's get started on that side. So before we can actually put our upper motor mount in here on this side, up here in the very top of our frame is this little channel and this bracket right here that has two nuts welded onto it needs to go in there for our upper motor mount bolts. So we'll slide it in there. Just kind of put it in there for right now. All right, so now we can set our upper motor mount in and we'll just set it in place. And then I'm going to put our two bolts in right here first to kind of just hold it in place. All right, the next bolts we need to put in is our two up here. And we're going to, have to kind of reach in our little channel right here to actually hold our plate while we put the bolts in. So I kind of got it lined up and I'm going to set our bolt in. All right, I got that one. And like I said, I'm going to line this one up and do the same thing. Now that we have all four of our bolts in, we can actually run them all the way down, and these are going to be a 5 16 Allen. The torque spec on the ones that go into our motor is 25 to 30 foot-pounds and the ones that go in the frame is 30 to 35 foot-pounds. So I've got my torque wrench set to 27 for these two right here. OK, 
kind of evenly doing it. And then I'm going to put these at 33. So our next bolt we need to put in is this one down here on the bottom. And what this is mounting is our VOES system. So let me put this bolt here on the bottom and I'll show you how we mount it on the other side. For holding the bolt on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to run your VOES to where it's the actual hose is facing up. All right, now that we got it in there, we can try to snake our nut in there to it. Now that we have our nut on there, we can actually tighten it up. And what I'm using is a half inch socket with an extension, and I'm going to use a half inch wrench on the other side. And there's no real need to worry about a torque spec. You just need to make sure you have it tight. Now we can plug our VOES system in. And we're done with that part. All right, now we're ready to put our front motor mount in. And the way you need to put it in is just kind of route it in there onto this bolt right here. All right, and then bring it around. And kind of line it up with your hole right here. And then just feed this in here, just kind of hold it in place. And if you'll remember, right there in that little channel, kind of like in our upper, we got one of these that goes in there. All right, just like that. So the bolts actually go here from the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little screwdriver and reaching in here to try and align it everything up. All right, I got that one. I got that one. All right, now we can put our washers and our nut right here on this side right here. You may have to kind of finagle the nut like I did right then to get it on there. So kind of like your upper ones, you torque your front ones right here to 25 to 30 foot pounds. And it's one of those where I'm going to use a crow's foot, 9 16 inch crow's foot right here because I can't get in there. And then just kind of working it around. Okay, and just like on the other side, I'm going to tighten this one to 27 foot-pounds, but and I'm going to be able to use a regular socket right here, 9 sixteenths. All right, now we can tighten these up on the frame, and these are going to be 30 to 35 foot-pounds. So I've got mine set at 33, and once again, these are 9 sixteenths. All right, so let's put our choke cable in the little slot right there.
and then run it down. And then tighten it up with 11 sixteenths. All right, so let's hook our horn up. And then set it right there and put our bolt on. And it's gonna be a half inch nut. So now we're able to put our backing plate on, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my gasket here on the backing plate. Just kind of lining it up. And now I can set it on the carburetor. And using a 530 seconds Allen, I can kind of snug these up. So the book says to torque these from 36 inch pounds to 60 inch pounds. Like I always do going in the center, I'm going to 48. All right, now we're able to put our two bolts in right there. And with a 5 16 let's run them down snug. So the book says to tighten these from 120 to 144 inch pounds. So I'm going to go to 132 inch pounds. All right, so let's set our fuel tank on here, and we're just going to kind of set it here in spot, and then we'll be able to hook up all of our hoses. So down here on the bottom, on the back, is where our little vacuum hose goes. So putting a hose clamp, orienting it so we can get to it easily, we'll feed it on the hose, and then we'll push our hose on to the actual gas tank. And then tighten up our hose clamp. And then don't forget about your overflow right here that plugs in on the bottom of your fuel tank. All right, so let's line up our gas tank and everything right here with your coils going on the outside of your gas tank mounts. And you can use a long screwdriver like I have here to kind of help guide everything in. Now that you have the screwdriver all the way through, as you pull it out, you can push the bolt in. And we'll just set the washer nut on there for right now until we put the back in. All right, so lining our rear of our gas tank up with the hole going through the frame. We'll push it through. And now we can put our washer nut on. All right, like I said, I don't think mine is stock, but I've got half inch bolts going through it. So I'm gonna use a wrench here on this side to hold the nut. And I'm going to use a socket with a half inch to tighten it up. And same thing on the front. So as you see, I've got some brand new spark plugs I'm going to put in here. And I'm just going to run them down by hand. And then we'll tighten them up. And 
and then we'll run our rear behind the horn. Putting it into the little bracket back here behind it. And then plugging our front one in. All right, we're ready for the exhaust and then we'll be able to crank it up. So the first thing we need to do in order to put our exhaust on is we're gonna to need to put our gasket on. And I'm not really impressed with the gaskets that come with the Comedic kit, but I'm gonna use it because I don't have any new ones. Because the old ones, as you can see, are a lot wider and kind of are beveled. But I'm gonna use this for right now. And if I feel like I've got an exhaust leak, I'll go ahead and change it out. So let's put it in there. So you can see how it just kind of barely fits just in the back side. So like I said, I'll probably end up replacing these in the future. All right, so now let's get our front exhaust. And with this bracket right here, that's gonna go right here underneath the rod that's connecting to your master cylinder for your rear brake. We're gonna line that up. All right, and then we'll spin our flange right here to line it up with the bolt holes. Now that we have everything lined up, we can get a half inch deep well with an extension and set our nut in there like that and then we can reach it in there and get it on the stud. All right now that we got that one started we can kind of start the one here on the back side. All right on this one on the back side we can just kind of reach in there with our hand and start it. Now that we have this one started we can actually put our nut on the stud that's holding our bracket on the rear part of our front exhaust. And here's where I was talking about, about the nut, so we can kind of feed our nut in there. So the book does say to tighten our flange nuts first before we actually tighten our bolt back here in the back. So these bolts right here are actually tightened from 72 to 96 inch pounds. So like I always do, I'm gonna go with 84. And I'm going to tighten them kind of evenly back and forth till I get to the torque spec. All right, and as you can see for this bolt right here, in order to get the torque wrench in there, I had to use a half inch cruise foot. All right, so our nut right here, we're going to tighten, the book says, from 20 to 40 foot pounds. So let's go with 30. All right, so let's put our gasket in there. So now we can put our rear exhaust on and we're gonna line our flange up with our studs. and then set it on our mount right there. All right, while we hold our flange onto our studs, we can put our nuts on. All right, so we're ready to put our nut here on the rear part of our exhaust. Just doing it hand tight. And now we're ready to come up here and tighten our flange nuts like we did on the front to the same torque spec. So my rear exhaust mounting bolt back here has been changed out. So your size is gonna be different, but it says to torque this to 84 inch pounds. All right, so let's line our rear master cylinder up and we're gonna put our two bolts in here. All right, so let's tighten our quarter inch Allens up and we're gonna to torque these 
to 150 to 190, so 172 inch pounds. So one reason why I waited today to put the exhaust on and actually crank the bike is because I kind of spent overnight kind of running through everything, making sure that I didn't miss anything. There's a few things that I did miss. For instance, I forgot to tighten the hose clamp for where the fuel is going into the carburetor and also where the overflow coming out of the bowl, I forgot to tighten those two hose clamps up. And also I forgot to do the key lock into the correct location. So I kind of had to go back and do that, but this video is going to be long enough as it is, so I didn't want to film me going back and doing all of that. And a major thing I did forget to do is tell you how to adjust your clutch, your throttle and your idle cables. The way you do that is that you kind of run them down until they very touch the top of your throttle cable little stops. And I'll show you this in just a second. So you can see right there how it's not touching the stop where the cable comes down. So what you do is you actually adjust this up here until it actually moves that down to the stop. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the slack out of the cable. So you can see how now it's kind of moving in and you want it to just barely touch the top of the stop. All right, so the moment of truth. It's one of those that it may take a few minutes to crank up because of the Peacock needs to have a vacuum, so I don't know whether it filled the bowl up on the carburetor, but let's try it out. So I had to hook the battery charger up. It's one of those that battery's kind of been sitting here for, you know, seven, eight months without being charged. So I kind of tried to turn it over a little bit, but like I was saying, it doesn't have any fuel in the carburetor, so it may take a minute for it to start up. So let's see what happens. So needless to say, I'm pretty excited. I wasn't really expecting it to crank up as quick as it did, but I'm pretty excited that it cranked up because, you know, I mean, I did all this myself, you know, and as you can see, without a few little special tools like the ring compressor, you're able to do this yourself. You know, I've got your basic tools that you can buy at Harbor Freight and even the ring compressor you can get at Harbor Freight too. So as you see, I know, like I said a while ago, I know this video is a little long and I apologize for that, but I kind of wanted to go into these details so that you would be able to do it yourself. Now, before I actually go riding around, I'm, sounds like it may be idling a little high, so I may need to adjust that just a little bit, but you know, it cranked up without having any issues. It sounded like, you know, it seemed like it's firing on both cylinders and kind of heat getting built up and everything. So I'm gonna kind of look over it one more time before I actually kind of go for a ride. But I did want to go over that if you did as what I did as far as, you know, putting new rings and getting honed out the cylinders, the book does say that there is a break-in period. So let me read that to you. It says for the first 50 miles or 80 kilometers, maintain engine speeds between lower than 25 RPMs in any gear. However, you don't want to lug the motor down, so you know, make sure that you're kind of going on a pretty decent road 
and not, you know, going up any kind of steep inclines. From 50 to 500 miles, it says vary the speed, avoid prolonged speeds at a constant, you know, engine speed. So you're not wanting to stay at, you know, 60 miles an hour for a long period of time. So what you say is stay below 3,000 RPMs and don't exceed 55 miles an hour. After the first 500 miles or 804 kilometers, your motor's broke in. And I kind of recommend after, you know, the break-in period of 500 miles, go ahead and change your oil and your oil filter again. That way you know that any kind of loose metal that may be from the engine startup and even from the break-in period, you can get all that cleared out. So well, that's all I got for you. Um, like I said, I'm pretty excited. I finally got the motor back together and it cranked up and doesn't feel like it's going to have any issues. So, like I said, y'all leave me a comment if you've done this, you know, and with this how-to, y'all definitely leave me a comment if y'all feel like y'all could do it yourself, you know, if you had access to some of the tools and everything. And like I said, most of these tools you can buy at Harbor Freight. And, you know, give me a big thumbs up too, you know, because, I mean, that, that helps me know that y'all are liking my content and everything. And, you know, share it with some people that may have one of these Evos and needs to rebuild it for a base gasket leaking or, you know, they blew a head gasket or just low compression. You know, they may need to change out the rings or they're smoking a lot. And, you know, I know I didn't go over how to install rings, but there's several videos out there that you can watch from cars to motorcycles to anything. And it's kind of the same concept as far as putting your rings on pistons. So until the next video, always take the center route and I'll see y'all then.